The EcoFlow alternator charger. We were super skeptical of this thing at first. We honestly got it thinking that we were gonna make a video just kind of shitting on it. But we put it through some testing and it turns out it's actually a pretty sick little unit. It's super convenient, it's pretty unique, and it's really, really cool to have if you're traveling with an EcoFlow power station. It also won't break the bank. You guys know here at the lab, our opinions cannot be bought. If at any point during this video, you wanna check this thing out, we will have some links in the description down below. Otherwise, before we jump into the testing and everything that we don't necessarily love about this unit, we are gonna jump into a super quick overview to get everybody familiar with this EcoFlow alternator charger. So first up, this thing passed the tiny baby lift test. This is just a frisbee to him. But what this thing basically is, is a DC to DC amplifier. Normally when you're trying to charge things through your car, you plug something into the 12 volt cigarette lighter, you get like 100 watts out of it. If you're trying to charge a power station, it's gonna take you 35 years. This plugs directly to your battery, but it still takes that 12 volt DC power. And it basically just amplifies it and you can get a maximum of 800 watts out of this little tiny flat pancake. That allows you to charge some of the smaller power stations within a matter of hours. This actually works by taking the extra voltage from your alternator and amplifying it. So it does, it can work just from a battery, but if you have this thing set to certain voltages, which you guys will see in a bit, it will only take the excess that your alternator is generating. It has three modes. You can actually use this to charge your power station. You could use it to get your power station to charge your battery, and it also has a maintenance mode, so you can just kind of leave your power station in your car if you're not driving a lot, if you're gonna be parked for a while, and they'll go back and forth and just kind of make sure that each other are topped up and maintained. And you can get this and all of its little components that come with it for $599, which is a wicked deal. One of the best things about this unit right here is how easy it is to set up. It came straight out of the package, there's only three connections necessary. One positive connection, one ground connection, and then one that connects the other end of the positive that you just connected. Uh, to a fuse to the rest of the, the wiring and that's it. Everything else just clips directly in the bottom here and you're good to go. Anybody that has hands can install this. And just for reference, in terms of the testing we did, I'd seen some videos on some other people's channels where they had some varying results. Some people had really good success and some people it didn't work at all. And I kind of thought that might be because some of them were grounding it to the frame of their vehicle instead of uh, grounding it to the battery in the vehicle. So we ran the tests both ways. One was grounded to the frame and one was grounded to the battery and we got the exact same results. So just for reference, apparently that doesn't make a difference. And so once we had everything wired up, I connected it with the adapter to the Delta Pro, which needed to update and took forever. But once that was done, I reopened up the app and it actually prompted me to connect to this thing all on its own. I hooked up to it and we were off to the races. I went ahead and fired up the Jeep and this thing started charging all on its own, which is perfect, exactly what I wanted to see. And it actually got all the way up to 800 watts basically right away, which I genuinely wasn't expecting. Okay, so this is actually really good news. One of my biggest fears was that the stock power draw just with the, the vehicle running was gonna to be too much for the alternator to be able to pull the full 800 watt. You guys can see right here on the Delta Pro, 800 watts going in. We've got a green light on the alternator charger. So the alternator was putting about 14.4 volts right into my Jeep battery. And seeing that this thing was just having no problem giving us the 800 watts, we started throwing some loads onto the electrical system of the Jeep. We started by turning on all of the driving lights, which had no effect. I cranked the AC, which had no effect. I went ahead and I cranked the stereo and I have like a nice aftermarket system. So I was thinking that that would pull some load, had no effect. And so with all of those things on, I then turned on every light on my entire Jeep. All the roof lights, the driving lights, the pod lights, every light that I have, which are all LEDs. I didn't expect it to make a huge difference, but it made no difference at all. One of the most significant things you notice is when you press the brakes, you could see that 14.4 volts dip, so press the brakes. It dips just a little bit. And then this Jeep has a very demanding electric steering system, uh, just because it's got a front solid axle. So when you turn the wheel a lot, you actually notice it even more. All the way down to 13.8 is the lowest I've seen. 
and it still had enough juice to pull 800 watts into this. We never actually saw the 800 watt number dip at all. So everything was working as advertised, which is honestly kind of rare. We also tested the other modes this thing has. So I tested the reverse charging, which doesn't work when the Jeep is running because obviously the alternator is also trying to charge the battery. But when the Jeep is off, I believe it was 200 watts directly into the battery, which is nice. And there's also the battery maintenance mode, which has a 100 watt limitation, but it'll keep the battery topped up. Just like I said earlier, if you're going to be parked for like an extended period of time, if you're doing van life, RV life, could be something good just to have on in case you have other draws using your battery. It'll just kind of share power, make sure everything stays nice and topped up. While we're here, if I could give you my two cents on the install on this thing, it would be to wire it with an inline switch. I have a full like bus bar in my Jeep with switches and stuff that are wired into the car, whatever. You can wire a switch however you want. This unit will always be on. There will be a little light right here that's always on. It's always sending out the Wi-Fi signal. It's always reading what the battery's at. It will eventually kill your battery, even if you're not using it. Um, there is like a manual power button on the side right here. There's a teeny tiny little power button right there. You could shut it down from the app. If you just go into settings, go to shut down. But you have to do that every single time that you turn your vehicle off. So I'd recommend just putting a, an inline switch somewhere so that you have to turn it on manually when you want to use it. We will be actually installing this in a future video. If you guys are interested, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And at the end of the day, if you guys are having issues with this and you're not getting the same testing results, you have somewhere in your system an unhealthy component. If your battery is like really weak and it's always demanding a ton of power from your alternator, this guy's not gonna be able to steal as much power. If your alternator is really weak and it's not sending enough power to your battery, this guy's not gonna be able to steal enough power. If you're powering a whole goddamn nuclear power plant off of your freaking battery and alternator in your car, this guy's not gonna be able to take enough power. If you have a problem, it's your problem. Jumping into everything that we really, really like about this alternator charger, first up is just gonna be the quality. This is honestly probably the nicest EcoFlow product I think I've ever touched. It's like a full metal build. It's really, really nice. It has little rubber feet on the bottom, so it doesn't slide around. It came with mounting brackets. The wiring harness is like way nicer than some car part companies make, which is weird. Uh, like the loom is great, the wire is great, it comes with a little fuse. Everything is just like way better quality than I expected from EcoFlow. We already went over all the different modes, but that's another thing that we really like about this thing. The fact that there is three different modes on it and it's not just a battery charger is really cool. It actually gives it some motivation for someone to buy it. It has more functionality than just charging a power station. And honestly, I hate to say it, but this is probably a better value than solar panels to a lot of people. If you're doing RV life or van life and you're always on the go, even if you're overlanding and you go camping, but then you go you know, off-roading during the day or you drive super far to get where you're going, this giving you 800 watts for $599 is way more power than you're gonna get for $599 worth of solar panels, especially from EcoFlow, and it doesn't rely on the weather. When it comes to things we don't like though, there is some. And first up, when we're making the solar panel comparison, hopefully I beat you keyboard warriors to this one, is that this is not transferable. So yes, it's a great value, but once you have this fully installed in a vehicle, it's fully installed, your wiring harness is tucked and run through all your panels, you're not taking it back out. It's not as uh, accessible, I would say, as solar panels. Once it's in a car, it's in that car. I also don't like that it lets you change the voltage option below 12 volts, or below 13 volts, really. So for people that don't know, a 12 volt battery should always be in the 12 volt range. If it's at 11 point anything, it's gonna die. And when you're charging it, you're inputting more power. It's usually 13 plus. So I, like I already explained to you guys when I set it up, I put the setting to 13 plus volts. So when the Jeep's off and it's reading 12.8 volts, this won't turn on and it won't kill the battery. But there's gonna be people out there that don't watch this video or don't know anything and they put the thing to 11 volts so it's always charging and after an hour their battery's gonna be dead and their car's not gonna start and they're gonna be stranded. There's gonna be bad reviews and people shitting on this thing because they don't understand how their car battery works. Even if you put it to 11 volts, it should pop up on the app and say, hey, your car is gonna die put it back. Something else I just don't like is as much as I just said that this is a super clean system, which it is, 
This is so thin and tiny. They could have put a little bit of extra bulk to this and removed the fact that all the cords have this mega donk on them. I don't know if there's anything in this or if this is just a weight. Like I really don't, it's hard to tell because it looks like a weight, but it's on both cords right here. And this is on the end that comes off of this unit. So if you have this nicely tucked up behind your seat, you go ahead and plug this cord in. Now you have a massive box coming off the back, which just immediately took away from how clean this was. I would have just rather this been one inch thicker and whatever's in this little ball was in this box. At the end of the day, honestly, EcoFlow, good job. No one, I don't think anyone expected EcoFlow to make a product like this, nor did they expect it to actually work as good as it does. So good job. Make sure you guys are subscribed because uh, as we know, once one company does it, they all do it. So I'm really excited to see uh, who does it next and how much better they think they can make it. That is all we got for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and stay charged. Thank you.